Okay, this is a funny one, which I feel like this specific item makes it on the list of most people's I bought it as a fad and I regret buying it list. <laughs> Not me. Hi everyone, this is Kiri with Healthfully Rooted Home and today I'm taking you through my capsule kitchen essentials. So if you know me, you know I love capsule everything. Capsule wardrobes, capsule grocery lists, and capsule kitchen essentials. I have videos on all of those topics. So basically, the idea of capsulizing something, in my mind, this may not be the technical term, but in my mind, the idea of capsulizing something is to make each item work hard in a variety of different ways. That's exactly what I like to do with my kitchen essentials. You'll notice that everything that I have that I consider an essential isn't necessarily a one use item, um, but I can use them for multiple different purposes um, in my kitchen. And the all of these things that I'm showing you today are workhorses. So I'm gonna take you through two categories of my kitchen essentials. We'll have like a tier one, we'll call it, which is my true to the bone kitchen essentials that I use on a daily or multiple time a week basis. And then tier two are the things that I do use often, but if I didn't have them, I could probably find another way. It just wouldn't be as easy. So my first kitchen essential is my apron. Now, the aprons that I wear for most of my videos are the waist aprons or the half aprons. Honestly, that's because they look the best. Um, but usually I just throw this bag over my head and call it a day. And this is a pinafore apron. The reason I like a pinafore apron is because it covers everything. So I'm sure I've worn this in one of my videos before, but basically it just goes like this. Um, has these nice big pockets that, you know, I usually end up finding toy trucks in here and little treasures that my son gives me throughout the day. Um, but I love this because it's full length. It covers all my clothes when I'm cooking. I can go from inside to outside in the garden, just wearing this thing and it's dirty and it's ragged. <laughs> So I don't typically wear it for my videos, but I will link this below. I just got it off Amazon. Um, I would love to learn how to sew my own aprons, but that's not on my priority list of things to learn how to do right now. It was super cheap. I think it was like less than $15 and it has lasted a very long time. And I'm telling you, I wear this thing out. So I'll link that below. So my next one is my blender. Basically, I use a blender in place of anything that requires a food processor. There are some things that I do wish that I had a food processor for, but I just, I hate having unnecessary appliances and I can always get the job done in here. So I'll make sauces in this thing, smoothies, I'll crush up nuts, um, there are even things like blender brownies and blender pancakes that I'll make from time to time. So that's a workhorse in this house. My only other appliance that I have on my list is an Instant Pot. The Instant Pot just actually recently made it to my kitchen essentials list a few years ago when I learned how to make my own bone broth, yogurt, things like that. So. Um, we do make our own yogurt most of the time. I just had um, three months of really bad pregnancy sickness and I let my yogurt go and we started buying store-bought for a while. It's just not as good. It's just really like too sour and bitter and making our own is just so easy. So I bought some more cultures. I started that up again. And so I use the Instant Pot for that. Bone broth is a must every single week. Um, what else? There's a lot of other things you can do with it that I actually don't, like making rice. I use my Dutch oven for rice. Eggs. I know I don't use it to its full potential. I do kind of want to get into looking into how to do that, 
But right now, just those two things, I think pretty much yogurt and bone broth. I do on occasion make some like freezer meals, which I'm gonna do a whole freezer meal video. Let me know in the comments below if you wanna see this. I spent like three different weekends making freezer meals for, because I knew, I know that I get really bad pregnancy sickness. So I made tons of freezer meals. Like it, they pretty much lasted us through the end of the three months. And so I'm gonna do the same thing for when this baby comes. So I'm gonna do a video on that um, if you guys are interested. So then the Dutch oven is my next essential. By the way, these are not in any particular order, um, but if they were, my Dutch oven would probably be number one or two on the list. So my Dutch oven is a true workhorse. I do soups, I do rice, I hard boil eggs. Um, I do pretty much everything in my Dutch oven. Oh, sourdough bread. Um, so I actually have two Dutch ovens. One is for my sourdough bread and one is for everything else. And the reason for that is because I have to make my sourdough bread on such a high temperature in my oven that um, my Dutch oven is white and it just makes it like completely black and I have to scrub it. I have a video on how I clean it, which is a lot easier than like sitting there and like scrubbing forever, but it's still annoying. So I do have two Dutch ovens for that reason. Okay, my next kitchen essential, this would make either one or two on my list are cast iron skillets specifically three sizes of cast iron skillets. So I have this small one here. This is like a six inch, I think. Um, but this I use for reheating most of our like leftover type foods. I try, try, try so hard not to use my microwave. I do still use our microwave. I hate to say it. I do. I haven't cut that habit yet. I've tried unplugging it um, in the past and then I just lose my vent fan and the overhead light. And then if it's plugged in, I don't have the self control to not use it. So I do use it, but I try not to. And so we reheat a lot of our food in this small cast iron skillet. And then also this is great for if I'm making up like a quick sauce or something, I use this small one. The next size up is an eight inch. And this is just like the perfect medium size cast iron skillet. Um, I do pretty much everything in this one. And then the next one I'm gonna show you. This bad boy is the 12 inch. Um, this one is uh, like, I pretty much don't put this away ever. Um, it's constantly being used. I make everything. When I say everything, I mean everything in these skillets. If you don't know how to cook with cast iron or are intimidated by the process, I do have an old video of mine. Um, the, if I watched it, if I rewatched this video, I'd probably be very embarrassed because it's like, one of my first videos, I think the content is still great. The information is still there. I teach you how to season a cast iron skillet so that it's completely nonstick, how to cook on it um, so your food doesn't stick, how to clean it properly. Um, if you're getting a brand new cast iron skillet, uh, maybe it's like rusted out or something, you thrifted it, I teach you what to do there. So go check that video out. I know that there's some controversy around using cast iron skillets with the iron and all of that. I haven't been convicted enough to super dive into that. Yeah, I just, I love cast iron skillets. I love cooking on cast iron skillets. The food tastes the best. So that's what we're going with. Okay, my next essential, specifically stainless steel baking sheets. I prefer to use stainless steel over the aluminum ones or whatever else is on the market, just cause I don't want all those toxins being released into our food. Even though I do cover the baking sheets most of the time with parchment paper or those silicone mats, um, I do still like them to be stainless steel because there are occasionally times where I don't. My next essential are ceramic or glass, but most of the time ceramic mixing bowls like these. So I have three sizes, small, medium, and large, <laughs> but these are, what I do all of my mixing in 
but I specifically like using ceramic or glass because when you are fermenting something um, or you're like doing sourdough bread, if you use a metal bowl, then sometimes the metal can be reactive and kill your yeast and it just messes up with the fermentation process. So I stick with these. They're also just way heavier duty. They're just, they have some substance to them. So that's why I like those. So there are only two knives that made my kitchen essentials list. The first is a chef's knife. That is this knife. I know that people, there are proper knives to use for things. There's paring knives, there's da da da, da. I just use a chef's knife. It's what works for me. It's the fastest. I've learned how to chop so well with that thing. I mean, my knife skills with a chef knife are on par. <laughs> um, so I just stick with a chef's knife. <laughs> and then I have a serrated knife. Um, and this is obviously for my super crusty sourdough bread. Okay, and then I have this medium size stainless steel saucepan. That is the only one that would make it to my essentials list. I could do everything in either this or my Dutch oven. So my Dutch oven acts as my large like stock pot and then my medium size stainless steel saucepan acts as my smaller to medium saucepan. And then if I need like a smaller size saucepan type thing, that's when I would use that smaller cast iron skillet. A box grater. So we buy all of our cheese in blocks. We don't ever usually buy it shredded. And so for that reason, I use this thing like crazy. Wide mouth mason jars. I have a video on how we store pretty much all of our food in wide mouth mason jars, even leftovers, but like everything, bone broth, yogurt. We cook from scratch most of the time. So all of our sauces or just everything goes in here. So specifically the wide mouth ones are the ones that we use. And then along with that, um, a canning funnel. I have to have this to be able to pour like the bone broth and stuff into the mason jars. So this is kind of an obvious one, which I'm kind of leaving out the obvious things like silverware and you know dish rags and things like that. But measuring cups and measuring spoons, obviously you have to use those. If you cook from scratch and you do a lot of baking and things like that, then these are a must. But I would say even more of a must for me, since I do a lot of sourdough baking, is a digital scale. Um, and you know, weighing ingredients is way more accurate. And when you're dealing with things like sourdough bread baking, that's really important. Um, metal spatula. So I have this one, which is like a shorty one. And then I have a longer one. Um, and then I have a couple more, but honestly, I could probably get rid of those cause I never reach for those. I only reach for the two that I'm referring to. So metal spatula specifically. I don't have a problem with these on my cast iron skillets. They don't ruin them. They don't, they're just fine. Last but not least are a variety of sizes of fine mesh strainers. Again, cooking from scratch, I find myself using these a lot. Okay, so my tier two, again, those are the things that I could not have in my kitchen and still do the things I need to do with them, but they're just nice to have. <laughs> uh, the first is my grain mill. So we buy whole wheat berries and so I mill a lot of our own grain. We save money that way. We're getting more of the nutrient from the whole wheat berries. Uh, so that grain mill comes in handy. Also, I do a lot of cream of wheat and you could use a blender to grind up the wheat berries for cream of wheat, but it's way easier to just use a grain mill and set it to the coarse setting to do that. So there's that. My second tier two essential is my immersion blender. So I could just use my blender for the things that I do my immersion blender for, but there are certain things like making my own mayonnaise. The way that you have to like add air into the the mayonnaise in order to thicken it up. I just don't see how I could do with the blender. And then um, 
it's really nice to just stick the immersion blender in like a butternut squash soup and blend it all up. Okay, this is a funny one, which I feel like this specific item makes it on the list of most people's I bought it as a fad and I regret buying it list. <laughs> Not me. And that is a soda stream. This is definitely a tier two essential, but nevertheless, I would still consider it an essential. I use this in place of like buying LaCroix or something like that. I love carbonated water. I love the fizziness of it. Um, and there's so much you can do. Like you could put tons of different fruit juices in there, um, squeeze some oranges or limes or lemons in your water and it tastes so good. But also I've been making my own magnesium using the soda stream. Another tier two essential is my KitchenAid mixer. Now, this was a toss up. It, that might make number one, but because the specific sourdough bread that I make as like my daily loaf of bread doesn't use the mixer, um, it's not on tier one because I could still make my bread and everything without the mixer. You can hand knead all of that. So I'm still gonna keep that as a tier two, but I do use that thing like crazy. So <laughs> that might be a tier one, but my KitchenAid stand mixer. I'll link as much as possible below as I can, but I do have a blog post on all the kitchen essentials that you could need. And this is beyond just my list. This is like, this would be a great post to send someone who is buying their first home or graduating from college and kind of moving out on their own into their own, you know, big hit house for the first time. Um, and it has a free printable with like a shopping list of everything that you would need to buy. So I'll link that below too. But thank you guys so much for watching this video.